The quarterback is arguably the single most important position in professional sports. Teams are built around a franchise quarterback, and a good one can do more to elevate their team than any other position or any other coach can. Because of how important the position is, it's also the most highly scrutinized position in all of professional sports. Throughout history, groups of quarterbacks have left their stamp on every era of NFL football. The 70s had Terry Bradshaw, Roger Staubach, and Ken Stabler. The 80s had Joe Montana, Dan Marino, and John Elway. The 90s were Brett Favre, Steve Young, Troy Aikman, and the early 2000s welcomed Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Drew Brees, who transcended the next few eras as they welcomed Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, and Russell Wilson. But four of those six are now retired, and the new age is upon us. It's led by the greatest to ever play the position in Patrick Mahomes a unicorn-type athlete in Josh Allen, and possibly the greatest dual threat at the position in Lamar Jackson. But there's one more name who doesn't get nearly enough credit for the stamp he's putting on this era of elite quarterbacks as well. And for him, it's only the beginning. Justin Herbert was the sixth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft out of Oregon. He was the third out of four quarterbacks selected in the first round after Joe Burrow and Tua Tagovailoa, and right before Jordan Love. Quite a class. For someone who put up these stats over his time at Oregon, the pick was met with a fair amount of criticism. Some even questioned if he would be able to beat out Tyrod Taylor for the starting job. Those questions were answered almost immediately. When Tyrod Taylor suffered a rib fracture after week one, Herbert was thrust into the starting role and didn't look back. In 15 games, he threw for 4,336 yards, 31 touchdowns, rushed for over 200 yards and another five touchdowns en route to the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Then he followed it up the next season by throwing for over 5,000 yards and accounting for 41 total touchdowns en route to his first Pro Bowl selection. Still not sold? In 2022, his third season in the league at age 24, he threw for 4,739 yards and 25 touchdowns, all while playing through broken ribs and finished ninth in MVP voting. Now we come to this past season, a season where the Chargers massively underperformed, finishing at 5-12. Their head coach was fired, and their offensive coordinator left. It was a season where Justin Herbert was constantly under pressure. He had the highest sack percentage of his career, and even ended up missing the final four games with an injury. Although in the games he played, he was still pretty damn good. In only 13 games, he had over 3,100 yards and 23 total touchdowns. He finished the season as PFF's 10th highest graded quarterback despite missing the final four games of the season. Want to know just how good Justin Herbert has been through his first four seasons? Here's where he ranks all time among quarterbacks through their first four NFL seasons. All he's done since coming to the league is put up historic numbers, but for some reason, He's taking more criticism this season than ever before. And all the pressure for my money is on Justin Herbert, because Harbaugh's not a loser. Herbert, at this point in time, he is. Coming off the crushing playoff loss in 2022 to the Jaguars, the struggles of the Chargers this season, and his injury, it created a false narrative. The narrative that Justin Herbert is no longer an elite quarterback couldn't be further from the truth. From a physical standpoint, at 6'6 and around 240 pounds, he's built as well as any quarterback in the league, but despite that size, he's a fluid runner who has the ability to avoid and at times even outrun defenders. Towards the end of his season, he was forced out of the pocket often, but showed the ability to make plays off script. His mobility is extremely underrated and became a strength despite inconsistent pass protection. What really stands out with Herbert are the intangibles. Battling through injury is one thing, but he consistently continues to show composure and poise in the pocket. He so rarely forces throws or makes reckless decisions even under extreme duress, he's still making the correct decision. The stats speak for themselves. Year in and year out, he puts up outstanding numbers. Not just outstanding, but historic. The only blemish on his resume thus far, though, his career record sits at 30 and 32. But is he to blame for the Chargers' shortcomings? There are a few things that have led to the Chargers' shortcomings this season, and not one of them is Justin Herbert. One reason is the wide receiver production. Aside from Keenan Allen, Herbert didn't have a consistent target all season long. Mike Williams, his down-the-field target, missed the entire season with an injury, Josh Palmer missed time, and first-round pick Quinton Johnston really struggled. The Chargers also sat at a 6.9% drop percentage and had 30 total drops on the season, many of them coming in crucial game moments. 
like these two in the end zone during a loss to the Green Bay Packers. The second reason is the disappearance of the run game. Aside from his week one performance, Austin Eckler was not his usual self. Obviously, he dealt with injuries as well, but neither Eckler nor any of the other Chargers backs were able to produce with any consistency. Not a single one of their running backs averaged even four yards per carry. Their most productive rusher? Yeah, you could probably guess, it's Justin Herbert. With that unproductive rushing attack, Herbert essentially was carrying the entire offense himself. Another issue was the protection plan, or lack thereof. It showed more towards the end of the year, but up until his injury, Herbert was one of the most blitzed quarterbacks in the league, and he still had a 96.5 passer rating against the blitz. Although the stats look decent against the blitz as well, 10 touchdowns and over 1,000 passing yards, defenses were able to rush with four and still put pressure on Herbert. He rarely had a clean pocket and was under constant duress, consistently being forced to go off script outside the pocket. Last but certainly not least, the defense. This was the highest paid defense in the league with a defensive-minded head coach, and they were in the bottom third of the league in points allowed per game at 22.4. Since Justin Herbert isn't taking any snaps on defense, I find it hard to believe he could have had any impact on that at all. If you were to only watch Herbert and the Chargers passing plays this season and ignore their rushing snaps and 90% of the snaps on defense, you would expect them to be a playoff team. If you watch the film, it's clear that Herbert is an elite Super Bowl caliber quarterback who's carrying an underperforming offensive line, receiving core, and rushing attack, all while trying to overcome an underperforming defense. Let's not let this past season change the narrative about one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You can clip this and remember it, but with a head coach like Jim Harbaugh coming in, who's had these things to say about Herbert. Uh, I was a little starstruck. Hey, hey. So, so, Justin. So. I don't think it's crazy to say that by the end of the 2024 season, we're going to be talking about Justin Herbert as one of the three best quarterbacks in all of football.